Hello, ham radio enthusiasts and electronic experimenters worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Doug Bingley, and his call is WA4BD, or also Victor Alpha 3BD. So he's bi countrified, both Canadian and American. He's wondering about a couple things. One, kind of how a basic antenna, the, the basic principle upon which an antenna tuner tunes. And the other has to do with coaxial versus open wire line. So we'll cover both of those. Before we jump into that, I'd like to mention that if you go to www.patreon.com slash ke0og, you can become a patron. And the advantage to that is that you get to look at all the videos early. They go up there as soon as we make them, and then they're released onto YouTube. Sometimes we're close to a month ahead, so you'll see the videos there more than a month before regular subscribers do. What does it cost to become a patron? Well, the lowest level, the electron level, is $2 a month. That's it. One of these. And yes, they do make $2 bills. You can go down to the bank and get one. This is one that's never been folded, I think. And it's just as flat as can be. It's got a picture of Thomas Jefferson. Okay, let's take a look at the answer. First of all, let's talk about antenna tuners. Here is an antenna. It has resistance, two kinds of resistance, and two kinds of reactance. This is the radiation resistance. This is the effective resistance against which the signal works that is the equivalent resistance to the amount of power actually transmitted. Then there is the ohmic resistance, which is the ohm resistance, the wire itself, and it accounts for the amount of signal that's dissipated as heat. Then there is inductive reactance and capacitive reactance. Now, in practical life, these two counteract each other, okay? You'll either see one or the other. Okay, now I'm going to do this just real simply. Here is a tuner. Now, if this resistance is, say, 63 ohms plus J15 reactants, the 63 comes from the resistance, and the J15, this is the reactance part here comes from one of these, okay? So what this thing does, a tuner, the simplest tuners are composed of capacitors, an inductor to ground, and a capacitor, and all three of these are variable. So usually you start with the inductor, you start on receive, you tune this for the loudest signal in receive, and then tune back and forth between these for the loudest signal, and you end up getting close. Okay, so this reactance is 63 plus J15. This is 50 ohms here, because this comes from your transmitter. What the tuner does is it creates what it sees this way for returning current, Remember, there's an impedance mismatch. Some power will be reflected back. So to this, what this looks like is 63 minus J15. If you change the sign in here, this is called the complex conjugate, which is a fancy way for saying, for whatever inductance you've got here, you've got the equivalent capacitance here. Okay, I think it's the other way around, pluses, capacitive. What happens is you've got a signal going out like this, okay? And then you get a signal coming back like this. What this does, it's got the reactive components only. So all the energy that's in here is going to be re-released back toward the antenna in phase with the transmitted signal. This is going that way, this was coming this way. Okay, now this is how an antenna tuner works. It gives it the complex conjugate, and if you run the numbers from this side, it's 50 ohms with no reactants. Run the numbers from this side, it's 63 minus J15. Okay, so the antenna is capacitive, meaning it's too short. So you add some inductance here, and that allows the 
two to balance each other out. Reflected power is captured, sent back out in phase with the transmitted signal. That's all very nice, but you don't need to know that to operate an antenna tuner. But now this brings up his other question. If you are dealing with a high SWR situation and you have coaxial cable and there is a wire inside of it, comes out as a wire, now let's suppose you have a high SWR. Now you get the same signal being reflected back, reflected forward, reflected back, reflected forward, and so on, until gradually this fades out completely. But what you're seeing is a much higher current in here than you normally would. I'm going to derive that formula because I can never quite remember it. We know E equals IR. And so power equals EI. We can substitute IR for E, so power equals IR, I, or equals I squared R, okay? So we look at the impedance here, it's 50 ohms, and we take the current, square it, and that right there gives us the heat in watts. It's by this piece right here, okay? So it's the current that matters. If you have, this is 50 ohms, let's say you have 450 ohms, what's going to happen to the current? Well, equals IR, so as this goes up by a factor of nine, the current goes down. So if the impedance goes up, the current's gonna go down by the same factor. So you're gonna have one ninth of the original current squared times nine gives you nine, a factor of nine less current, okay? So if you have a factor of nine less current, and it's the, this that does it here, okay, the power that's actually radiated is a ninth of what's radiated at 50 ohms, one ninth. That's approximately equal to one tenth, which is 10 dB less loss. Okay, 10 dB less loss. So there you have it, two things that we learned. First of all, the antenna tuner presents to the antenna the complex conjugate of its impedance, which allows it to capture any reflected uh, power and send it back to the antenna in phase with the power that comes out of the transmitter, okay? And then we looked at, this is open wire line, usually called ladder line, because it looks like somebody's climbing a ladder that has an inherent impedance of 450 ohms. This right here is twin lead, and this has an inherent impedance of 300 ohms. Now, if you take your coax at 50 ohms, you can see that the current when working across those is such that much more of the power is in the form of voltage versus the current. The thing that creates the heat is the current, not the voltage. So by playing with the impedance like that, we can get a lot more of our signal through. So for long distances, such as you live just beyond the brow of a hill, you put up an antenna on top of the hill, and it's 150 feet away, use window line or the ladder line, 450 ohms, or go ahead and get the true ladder line, which is 600 ohms. Even less current will be lost in there, less heat and send it up to there and then just have a ballon. A nine to one ballon will take 450 ohms back down to 50 and you can feed your antenna. It's a great way to do things, move signals over long distances. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.